Since buying my first uh, Radio Master Pocket a few months ago, I realise I've built up quite a collection. So this is a bit of an overview before I get into the whole updating process. I started to wonder how to update my Radio Master Pocket because I bought a couple more uh, receivers and found this excellent video online I can recommend from Flight Test, uh, which made the whole process of updating the uh, version of the LRS on the Pocket very straightforward. So here's uh, what I had to start with, 330. Uh, and that's how it came up when I used the configurator on my PC and uh, no problem, successfully updated or then after the update rather, the pocket was at 343, great next step is to look at the range, range nano that's on 332, so again confirm that bringing it up in the configurator on my PC and uh, Ran the update and there it is at 343, no problem at all. So the next thing, and there it is on the Razor Nano display at 343. So all good. Next trick was to update the RP1 receivers already in a drone. So I plugged it into the uh, configurator, came up and confirmed whatever version it had, and then I did an update. I I'd, I'd, I'd previously used the configurator to download all the latest firmware for these things, by the way. And this is where you can see the directories on my uh, PC where I'm picking the firmware up, appropriate firmware up from. And away we go with the update. Um, the first time I did this, it failed. It was version 3.0.0. And Joshua Bardwell did a great video explaining that you had to go back to an earlier version, which turned out to be the happy model uh, 2.5.2. Um, but I thought, no worries, the, the new um, RP1s I've received are the, they're beyond 3.0, so the problem should be solved wrong. Exactly the same problem, not enough space. So um, it was back to downloading another version of the Happy Model uh, 2.5.2 and uh, flashing that instead. So, um, as I say, disappointed I had to do this. I'm not sure what Radio Master could have done. Um, because if you don't stumble upon Joshua Bardwell's advice, it's not obvious that you're going to a different brand to uh, to take your flashing back. I gather there are other ways to do it, but uh, once I understood this, this works fine for me, even though it involves a double flash. And there we are, it warns you that uh, you know it's a mismatch. You want to force the update, so go for it. So there it is flashing madly, it's once again attached to the PC, or I've logged, I'm logging in on the network, the Express LRS network that comes up, RX, and uh, there's the old version, and then I have to refresh the screen in a moment to bring up what I've now got on it. So 252 is what I had before I, I do a reboot. Oh, hang on, I'm back a bit. I'm going to upload the firmware again, so this time I'm going to uh, upload and put version 343 over the top of 252. So it's picking up the firmware from where I've downloaded and stored it. Running the update, so remember the current firmware is 252, the happy model. So it looks a bit different as it goes through its update process. Success. So happy with that. So wait for it to reboot and come up again as a web server with a rapidly flashing light. Go back to the PC where I've still got 252 on the screen. Log in again to 10.0.0.1, Express RX, and then I can refresh the page. And here I am, I've successfully flashed that. Uh, embedded RP1243. So I thought now's the time to update the new ones I bought. So in this case I just sold it on um, earth wire and the, the battery wire onto an old USB cable so I just plug it straight to the PC because I'm not ready to wire it up and put it in a, uh, a quadcopter just yet. I bought these things as backups essentially. So that's what it looks like and I've made this uh, USB cable to provide 5 volts to all sorts of things it's been very useful and there we are I've now got the standalone uh, chip doing its web server bit blinking rapidly which means I should be able to access it 
uh, from the PC wirelessly again the same network name and there it is and it's 331 I think it is so yep needs an update so once again uh, I have to go through the uh, the double update story So there's the firmware ready to update. And this time we've gone straight to 252, happy model 252, force the update. Because I suppose I was knowing that these RP1s, newer ones, came with a newer version of ExpressRS, I was vaguely thinking, oh, maybe the, the problem will be overcome, but. Uh, I don't think so. So this time I went straight to here. So a little bit tedious, but once once you know the trick of it, it's it's not too bad. It's just I suppose even though I'm. I'm into ERS at this point because I feel it's reasonably mature. It's still got a little way to go. And there we are. I've successfully updated the standalone with just the power and the earth wires attached to it. Bounce. Bounce. And I've just connected to it with my um, pocket. And I know that because it's saying 10 volts because the if I connected with... Um, 10 milliwatts. Yeah. Zero. So Zero. it's Zero. 10 milliwatts. Bounce. So success. So I just thought to throw this together to give other people an idea.